Episode number 26. Willie Fogg had wagered he could travel around the world in 80 days, promising to return to London's Reform Club by 8.45 the previous evening. Regrettably, he was delayed and arrived a scant five minutes too late. That was a delicious dinner. I'm a lot of sausages. Ow, my finger! I dream I was eating a sausage, but I almost bite my finger off. <laughs> I'm so hungry. Why didn't we have a dinner last night? Oh, yeah. When we got home last night, we went right to bed because we were too tired to eat. I wonder, how long are we sleeping anyway? I find out. Allez, hop, hop là. It's a two o'clock. It's afternoon already. Wake up, a sleeping beauty. <laughs> Wake up, Rigodon, wake up! Yeah. The ship leaves in half an hour. We'll get to England. We are in England. Remember? Huh? In England? Mm -hmm. We're here already? Oh, now I remember how Monsieur Fogg tried so hard to go around the world in 80 days and then was late to the Reform Club by only a few minutes. Right. I'm a feel sorry for the poor guy. It was so sad. I've never seen him like that before. Of course he's sad, Tico. Wouldn't you be if you were bankrupt like he is? I think it's more than just the money, Rigodon. I guess so. But right now, he must be thinking about the 40,000 pounds he did have and how much he will have left after he pays the 20,000 he has lost. Ah, hey, that's wonderful. That means he still has the 20,000 pounds left. Afraid not, Tico. You think we traveled for free? It costs a great deal to travel around the world. There's hardly anything left now. Ah, uh. it's all gone. There, you see? This is all that's left of his fortune. 10 pounds. Rigodon, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna eat? We've got to leave, Tico. If we stay here, we will be a burden to Monsieur Fogg. We still have plenty of friends in the circus who will give us a job. Are you crazy or something? Huh? No. I like Mr. Fogg, and I'm a like the princess, and I'm a like the house. Go on, go back to the circus. I'm not going with you, and that's the final. <sighs> Tico, believe me, I don't want to leave either. You know that I enjoy working here. I like Monsieur Fogg and the Princess Romy as much as you do. But don't you think that he is going to have enough to worry about without having two extra mm. mouths to feed? <laughs> We must. It's the only thing we can do that will help him. That's the spirit, Tico. But are you sure we're doing the right thing? <laughs> mm hmm Can't you be more quiet, Tico? Hmm? You're going to wake them. You mean we're leaving here without even huh? saying a goodbye? That's right, Tico, without saying a word. Oh. It's better this way. The only thing I'm going to do before we leave is to reset the clock. Now let's see, where did I leave that winding key? Hmm. Now. Hmm. Are you sure your watch is right? You never reset it on the trip, you know? It's still right, I don't know why. Hmm. There, now this one's right too. Hmm. Ah. There, now it's working perfectly. Oh. Hey, we better leave that 10 pounds. Mr. Fogg's gonna need it. Oh, I almost forgot. I'll leave it here. Say, this will keep it from blowing away. 10 pounds won't go very far, I'm afraid, but at least I'll be able to eat for a couple of days. All right, Tico, let's go. Oh. 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 Hey, you know what, Rigodon? 
I'm gonna miss this huh? house. Hmm. I just thought of something, Tico. I have been Monsieur Fogg's butler for over two months now, but in all that time, I've spent only two days in his house. You're right. And so, Mr. Fogg's two erstwhile traveling companions leave his fashionable Savile Row residence, heading towards an uncertain future. So long, the princess. What a shame. One last look at your neighborhood. For what seems like miles, the two friends plod along dejectedly. However, they don't seem to be making too much progress. Another last look at the old neighborhood? Hey, get on. Hey, get on. Uh, wait a minute, will you? I want to ask you something. Tico, what is the matter with you? Why we got to leave without a saying a goodbye? It just don't seem right, Rigadon. It's too far to go back now, and if we did, Monsieur Fogg would tell us to stay, even though we know the best thing we can do for him is to go. What are you talking about? You talk just like you walk Rigadon in a circle. The house ain't too far to go back. We're right next to it. Huh? Well, if that isn't the strangest thing. Oh, Rigadon, you knew it all along. You're done a pull of me one a bit. I suppose you're right. I guess I did. Well, since we're here, let's say goodbye. Hey, right. Ready? Go. go. You think they up yet? I don't know, Tico. Let's go find out. Tico? Wait a minute. What is it now, Rigadon? You want to say goodbye or not? Of course we're going to say goodbye. But for our last visit, I want to look my best. That's all. Oh. Oh. You're ready now. All right, I'm ready. Bene. Hm. hmm. The house is so quiet this morning. Go ahead and knock. Hmm? May we come in, monsieur? Hm. Try again. Mm hmm. Are you there, monsieur? Hmm. He doesn't answer, Tico. Hm. Hmm. Strange. Uh, monsieur Fogg. Hello. Monsieur. Oh. What's huh? going on? Hmm, how odd he hasn't changed his suit or slept in his bed. You're right. Mr. Fogg, Mr. Fogg, where are you? Come out, come out, wherever you are. Hey, you think something could have happened to him? <clears throat> oh, come on, Tico. Yeah, I'm coming, Rigadon. Princess, oh, princess, are you here? Where are you at? One moment. I'm coming. We're sorry to disturb you, but... There's something strange going on here, Princess. We can't find uh, Mr. Fogg anywhere. Where could he have gone, I wonder? Willie Fogg is thinking of a very special person and a very special moment in his life. I love her. He is recalling a lovely day in the gardens of Singapore and the moment when he first realized that he was in love with the beautiful Princess Romy. <laughs> ah! Hmm. There. <laughs> Thanks. Princess. Have you found them yet, Tico? Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? Oh, mon dieu. Why didn't you tell me? I just did. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Come on, Tico. Mm -hmm. Monsieur Fogg, Monsieur hey. Fogg. I'm glad Hi. to see you. Are you all right? Well, of course I am, Rigodon. Why on earth shouldn't I be? Mm, you can't fool us, so we know you didn't sleep so good. We looked everywhere and got worried when we couldn't find you because we didn't want to leave without saying goodbye. I understand. Good luck to you both. Huh? Rigadon, I'll ask you to do one last thing for me today before you leave, all right? Of course, it would be a pleasure, monsieur. Very well. Tell Princess Romy I'd like to speak with her, if I may. Oui, monsieur, right away. Uh, even faster. Hiya, princess. princess. Have you found Mr. Fogg yet? We. Oui. Monsieur Fogg was in the garden all morning picking flowers. Oh, I'm glad. Princess Romy. Huh? Yes, Tico? That's not all. He said that he wanted to talk to you. It sounded real important. Oh, I wonder. <laughs> Mr. Fogg. Princess, there's something I've been wanting to say for some time now. I simply wanted to offer you my sincerest apologies. Huh? Apologies? Considering my precarious financial position, it was irresponsible of me to have brought you here. Oh, but what does that matter? You see, when my friends and I rescued you from those savages, that bloodthirsty tribe that captured you, my personal fortune was still intact, and I felt sure that I could offer you a life of ease and comfort here in England. Mr. Fogg! But my failure to complete the journey in 80 days has ruined me, and now... I can offer you nothing, I'm afraid. Which is why I must apologize to you. Apologize? Mr. Fogg, it is on my account that you failed. 
Your rescuing Lee from those horrible Kali worshippers yeah. cost you a great deal of time. Nonsense. If anyone's to blame, I am. There's no doubt in my mind about it. It was the time you took to save me that ruined you. But that's simply not true. Any gentleman of character would have done the same in my place. I would never forgive myself if I'd done otherwise. Little by little I fell in. Uh, little by little I convinced myself to bring you here. It was my decision and you are faultless. Mr. Fogg. Please, I won't hear another word. Let's talk about the future, shall we? The first thing I'll do is sell the house. Most of the money will go to you, of course. You should be quite comfortable. Mr. Fogg, I know you're trying to be a gentleman, but you mustn't even consider it. Why not? As a bachelor, I need very little to live on, actually. But why take such drastic measures? Surely your family and friends will see you through temporarily. I have no family, Princess, nor have I friends to look to for help. All I have left is this house and what's in it. You have me? Eh? <gasps> You're being practical as usual, but what good will it do us if we're both alone and unhappy? You're so intent on being an honourable English gentleman. Are you blind? Can't you see that I love you? Marry me, Willie Fogg. Marry you? Mm-hmm. Nothing would give me greater pleasure, <laughs> only I hadn't dared hope that you felt the same way. I love you, Romy, with all my heart and soul. <gasps> oh, Willie. <laughs> well, I'll be... <laughs> We shall be married tomorrow. Oh, oh, oh. Congratulations, monsieur. I hope you're very happy. Of that, you can be sure. I'm so happy mm -hmm. for you, princess. It's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> this is the happiest day of my life. I'm glad to see that you approve. It means a lot to the princess and me, you know. Now, Rigodon, I'd like you to go to Westminster Cathedral and ask Reverend Wilson what time would be most convenient for the ceremony tomorrow. Right. I'll go right now, monsieur. Oh, yes. And mm -hmm. another thing, Rigodon. Yes? Ask the ironing woman to prepare my morning suit, all right? Mm-hmm. And Princess Romy will need a bouquet of flowers. Drop by the flower shop and see it taken care of, would you please? A pleasure, monsieur. You can take that ten pounds over there. You may consider it done, monsieur. Now, I'm sure that the two of you are hungry, so I'll fix you a little breakfast. <laughs> Thank you, Rigodon. That was very thoughtful of you, Rigodon. Tico, stop pacing like that, will you? You're making me nervous. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry to bother you, but will this take very long? No, just a little while longer. Lady, that's what you said before when we asked you, and we've been waiting forever. Oh, don't exaggerate. It's got to be perfect if it's Mr. Fogg's waiting. Yeah, but he wants to get married tomorrow, not next week. Hush, Tico, don't be rude. Oh, that's all right. Everyone gets nervous the day before a wedding. <laughs> You're driving me crazy, Tico. Tough. No. What's next? Flowers. Hurry, Tico, oh, we're late. Oh, nice for Mr. Fogg. Such a refined type of gentleman he oh, is. Oh, will it take long? We're late as it is. Hmm, now for Mr. Fogg's wedding, it's got to be something extra special. Now, let's see. Hmm, I know just the thing. Wait here a minute. I'll be right back. Oh, uh... Wait a minute. The way this day's have been going, we're going to be here a month. I'm sorry to disturb you so late, but we must talk to Reverend Wilson. I'm sorry he's not here right now. He's out for the evening. He's not here? So when's he coming back? You got any idea? All I can tell you is that the Reverend will be back sometime later this evening. If you wish to see him, you'll have to wait for his return. So what do we do now? We'll just have to wait for him. Oh. Figures. <laughs> Figures on, uh, we've been waiting here so long, these flowers feel like they were a ton. Oh. Huh? <laughs> I was kidding. <laughs> there. <laughs> Good. Oh. Whoa! I shall hope that's him. Me too. Hiya, Mr. Reverend. We've been waiting for you. Are you Reverend Wilson? No need to yell. I'm not deaf. Right, Joe. Now, my excitable young friend, what can I do for you? I apologize, Reverend Wilson. My friend and I have been making important arrangements all day, and we're both a little nervous. I was sent by Mr. Willie Fogg, who would be honored to have you officiate at his wedding. So, Willie Fogg, the confirmed bachelor, is finally getting married. I must say, I'm surprised. I never thought I'd see the day. Well, I'd love to. On what date? Tomorrow, December 23rd, in the morning. That's why we had to see you right away, Reverend. It all happened so quickly. Tomorrow, eh? Well, I'd be glad to do it, of course, but there's one thing. The date tomorrow is December 22nd, not the 23rd. With all due respect, I happen to know that tomorrow is the 23rd. I assure you it couldn't be otherwise. I wonder, then, how you account for the fact that today is December 21st. Haven't you lost a day somewhere? Are you positive? The last time I was wrong about anything was when I thought I had made a mistake, which, of course, I hadn't. Oh, uh, oh! Huh? 
But that means we did it in 80 days after all. <laughs> Tico, hurry! <laughs> we must tell Monsieur Frog. <laughs> <laughs> hurry, Tico, carry it on. You're forgetting something, aren't you? <laughs> oh, you're right. It's, it's, it's so amazing. It's so incredible. I must be dreaming. I can't believe that this is really happening. <laughs> Go! Nice to meet you, bye. Reverend, please excuse us for rushing away like this, but something very important has just come up. We are in the great hurry. How very odd. How very odd indeed. Faster, Tico, faster! I know you want to make a Mr. Fog happy, but we gotta run so fast! Huh? What difference do a couple of minutes make? We have just enough time to get to the Reform Club, but we don't have a second to spare! Run, Tico! Hmm, they've been gone an awfully long time. Yes, they have. I wonder what's keeping them. Quite possibly they've had to wait for the Reverend. There's something strange here. On the trip I told Rigodon he had to set his watch one hour ahead whenever we crossed the Meridian. He adamantly refused to do so, however, saying that he had no interest in knowing the local time, but only what time it was in London. Oh, silly. What I fail to understand is that though I reset my watch a total of four and twenty times, they are both in complete agreement and indicate the same time precisely. Hmm. Well? Oh. As we were constantly travelling in an easterly direction, we gained four minutes for every degree of longitude. We traveled 360 degrees around the world, which means we gained 1140 minutes, which equals 24 hours, which means this is not the 22nd, but the 21st. But, Mr. Fogg, that means... Monsieur Fogg, huh? eh? Something incredible has happened, Monsieur Fogg. <laughs> <gasps> <sighs> Monsieur Fogg, we've made a terrible mistake, so I don't know how. Today is not the 22nd, but the 21st. Absolutely correct, my dear Rigodon. As a matter of fact, I've just realized the same thing myself. We're going to the Reform Club, Rigodon. We'll need a coach at once. Yes, sir. You've done it, Monsieur. You're going to win the wager. Only five minutes remain before time runs out. Crowds of expectant Londoners wait outside the Reform Club, while the members of the prestigious and venerable establishment wait within. Four of their number have wagered five thousand pounds apiece against Mr. Fogg, and the air fairly sizzles with suspense. Yeah. <laughs> Do those fools out there really expect Fogg to show up? A great many of the citizens out there are readers of my newspaper and have wagered everything they have on Willie Fogg. That article of Ralph's led them to believe that Fogg could do it. Some people will believe hey? anything they read, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose we shouldn't count our chickens before they hatch. He still has three minutes, after all. If he did get to Liverpool somehow, he'd take the afternoon train to London. What time does it arrive? That train arrives at precisely 7.23, Mr. Sullivan. Fogg must have missed it. Because if he had been on board, he would have been here an hour ago. Why, naturally, he wasn't on that train. He was delayed in Chicago by a blizzard, which prevented him from getting to New York in time to catch the China, which in turn made it impossible to reach the city of Liverpool in time to catch this afternoon's train. It's a question of cause and effect, gentlemen. Well said, Mr. Farrell, well said. Absolutely irrefutable logic. No doubt Mr. Fogg is still wandering around the docks in New York. <laughs> Searching for a ship to take him to Liverpool. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, just to show my sense of fair play, I brought along my share of the money poor Mr. Fogg would have won if he had made it in time. Five thousand pounds. <laughs> poor Mr. Fogg. <laughs> my foot. <laughs> yes, quite. <laughs> <laughs> and mine makes a total of... 20,000. If he doesn't get here, mm. I have his check. Oh, drat. Where did I put it? Oh, yes, here it is. A check for 20,000 pounds signed by Mr. Willie Fogg and made out to the four of us. Jolly good. A check will be ours in two minutes flat. Hurry, driver. We must get there in a few minutes. Oh. Mr. Fogg's time runs out in a minute and a half. I hate contradicting you, Mr. Farrell. He now has less than one minute left. Oh! I said. Twenty-five <laughs> seconds. <laughs> 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 Oh, 15 seconds. Eh? Who's that? Eh? <laughs> Never make it. Wanna bet? Hmm? I've done a better with my eyes closed. <laughs> you see? I always been a good shot. Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, it can't be. Oh, sir. Hmm. <laughs> Frightfully good to see you all again. Hello, Ralph, Lord <laughs> Guinness. I would have dropped round last evening, but after such a long journey, it's so relaxing to spend a quiet evening at home. What? Yes, got back a bit early. 
early. Which means he went around the world in 79 days, Lord Dillon. I it? knew he could do it, and he did <laughs> oh, it. Yeah. Three oh, chairs oh, for Mr. Willy Bob. Oh, hooray! Yep, oh. yep, oh. hooray! Oh. 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 Lord Guinness, you must be more careful. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Are you sure you're all right, Lord Guinness? Never felt better in my life! If I'm not mistaken, I have met all the conditions of the wager, have I not, Mr. Sullivan? I admit it, Fogg, you've won. Mm. Mm. You win, Mr. Fogg. Pico! Pico, wouldn't you agree that this bag has been empty for too long? Ah, right! And here is Monsieur Fogg's <laughs> check. They'll never be able to cash it now. <laughs> Mr. Fogg, yeah. might I have a word with you? We have some important matters to discuss. I'm not sure if I can marry a rich man like oh, you. No. Won't you reconsider? I beg of you. Oh. Well, you've convinced me again. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Willie Fogg succeeds in going around the world in 80 days. Remarkable. It's strange, Lord Guinness. Even though I always knew he could do it, I still can't believe he did. Well... <laughs> It says here that Sullivan is no longer the governor of the Bank of England. He's been fired for misappropriation of funds. That's quite enough shoving. Now stay back there where you belong. I did. No, I told you time to gain. You can't allow them to intimidate you. Put your back into it. Paul got lucky, that's all. It wasn't my fault. Give me another job, Sullivan. I won't fail you again. <clears throat> I happen to be looking for work uh, myself. Uh, you don't know of anything available. Uh, it appears that Willie Fogg's success is our downfall. Yes. enjoyed our 80-day adventure traveling around the world with Willie Fogg.